Hey guys, it is the 23rd of April. My name is Jess McDonnell and you're tuned in to GameSpot News. First up today from Software have finally patched Bloodborne's horrendously long loading times. Probably just in time for you to have lost interest in it. The game's 1.03 update hopes to minimize your frustration by bringing down the time it takes to load the next scene by 5 to 15 seconds. The game now also gives you something to read while you wait, similar to previous Souls games. The meaty patch is 2.7 gigabytes and also fixes the number of bugs related to inoperable lifts immobilized bosses and story progression issues among others. If you're a clever person who makes mods for Skyrim, Valve are now letting you sell said mods in the Steam Workshop. Creators will be able to set the price for mods, items or maps and they're able to change said prices after release. Of course they can still opt to keep their creations free like before if they choose. In accordance with Valve's user agreement, you are entitled to a refund if you aren't satisfied with your purchase and you file for your money back within 24 hours. Up until now, Steam Workshop creators could only sell their items for Valve games like TF2 and Dota 2. But Valve said in January that they had plans to open this up to third-party games. There are currently over 24,000 free mods available for Skyrim and to date they've seen more than 170 million downloads. Loads. Alongside this news, Bethesda have announced the Skyrim creation kit has been updated, with new features like the removal of file size limit restrictions and the ability to upload master files. Finally, Batman Arkham Knight's PC system requirements have been unveiled just two months before the game is ready to launch. Arkham Knight will require at least 6GB of RAM and 45GB of hard drive space, while the recommended benchmark calls for 8GB gigabytes of RAM and 55 gigabytes of hard drive space. Rocksteady also released their Ultra system requirement for those of you who want to get the game looking as beautiful as possible. The only difference between these and the recommended specs is that you'll need at least a GeForce GTX 980 graphics card as opposed to a GeForce GTX 760. You can find the full minimum recommended and Ultra system requirements on GameSpot. Let me know down in the comments if you think charging for mods is a good idea or not and why. You can head to GameSpot where we've got stories on Square Enix's E3 press conference and how Star Wars Battlefront is going to be different to Battlefield. As always, do leave me your thoughts down below and pop back same time tomorrow where I'll have my top 5 stories of the whole gaming week. I'll see you then.